I got asked a question about squatting and what is the healthiest way to squat. That was a question to me. What is the healthiest way to squat? I, uh, I answered it by saying the healthiest way to squat is full range of motion all the way ass to grass. Um, I hate saying this, but studies have shown that there's less shearing forces on the knee when you go ass to grass and you don't reverse the, the, the descent motion at 90 degrees of the knee angle and then you bounce back up from a 90 degree angle. It's a lot better when your hamstring touch your calves and then you go up from there. But then I said, it is extremely difficult to squat ass to grass, especially if you live in the Western world and you're a Westerner who is used to sitting on chairs, toilets and cars um, and who basically never gets below 90 degrees of a knee angle period, let alone to go and put weight on your back and squat with weight added. Um, but that doesn't mean that you don't squat at all. Uh, I kind of, when I, when I read this question, I kind of thought it's kind of like asking somebody what's your favorite car or what's your favorite song or what's your favorite color. Um, you know, squatting is like any other thing in the world. Um, some people prefer it at 90 degrees, some people prefer it all the way. Yes, this, our study said that it's better if you go all the way, but this study said over there, you know, it's better to go this way. The bottom line is, I don't think any of this should deter you from squatting at all. I think you should just start squatting um, and do as much as your body can do, and then you progress from there. But the thing that kind of had me going from there on was this idea of squatting for a result, as in, I'm gonna squat this way because it allows me to move more weight. Um, I highly disagree with that. Um, that's definitely not my way of training. I don't do something so I can do more weight. That's never been my motivation. My motivation has always been form, as in, when I see somebody squat ass to grass, for instance, like Clarence Kennedy, and he squats, say, 300, that is far, far, far more impressive to me than seeing somebody squat 350 and it's a west side barbell squat where he's kind of like wrapped up in 50 layers of knee pads, knee wraps, and he's got massive suit and he's basically sitting into something that's gonna recoil him back up. Um, to me, it's much more impressive to see Clarence Kennedy squat than a lot of the people on the net who squat. Um, this is why I always kind of deviate towards uh, you know, watching Olympic weightlifters squats um, because it's far more appealing to me. Um, I've also heard, you know, throughout this Squat Everyday program, oh, dude, if you just squat parallel, you'll be able to squat more weight. To me, that's not what I'm after. Like, I'm not after anybody saying to me, oh, my God, like, you squatted this much weight, you're better than me. I don't really care about that. For me, the, the thing has always been, I know what the human body is capable of, and I want to train to what the human body is capable of. I don't like skimming range of motion for, for weight and, and, and for clout and, and posting, oh look, I've, I've, I've done a 55 kilo PR and all this sort of shit, like I'm not interested in that. For me, it's all about training the body in, in, in a way that I've conceived in my mind that, that it's supposed to be the way to move. Um, now, I, I can already hear some of you guys saying, well, s squatting ass to grass for weightlifters is the reason why they do it is because they have to catch the bar really, really low. So if somebody can squat ass to grass, he can catch that bar ass to grass. Therefore, he can clean more weight um, and clean and press more weight, right? Because you don't have to have that upward motion of the bar so high, um, you know, if you can squat ass to grass. So for me, it's kind of like, I don't want to sound, see here, I don't want to sit here and say to everyone, oh no, if you don't squat ass to grass, you're not worth your shit. I'm, I'm not, that's, that's not who I am. I am somebody that just wants everybody to train. I want, I want everybody to get out, you know, off the couch and start training. Um, but when I, when I get asked a direct question like that, I'm always going to say what I feel, right? Like I'm not going to say, you know, oh, so you can't squat ass to grass, but no, no, don't, do, don't, don't squat ass to grass. Squat to parallel, um, squat like the Westside Barbell Boys and, and that's it. The Westside Barbell Boys basically were squatting to break records and break records in a competition which didn't give a crap about squatting below parallel. So if the sport says squat to parallel and you are there squatting below parallel because you like it that way, you're not gonna be breaking any records because the dude that's squatting 
just to parallel is going to be lifting a lot more weight than somebody who's squatting ass to grass. If you're interested in breaking records and you just want to chase that, then that's that's I, like I don't want to, well, I don't know what to tell you, man. You just go ahead and do that. Um, but that's not my uh, goal. Like I, I really don't care. Um, it's kind of like saying you have a job A and a job B. Um, job B pays way more than job A, but job A is more enjoyable and, and more appealing to you. Which one are you going to take? You know, obviously there's going to be a, you know checks and balances between the two things, but. If you're that person that just chases money, chases results, chases, you know, weight on a bar, and, and that's that's all you care about, and that's like that's you, right? But for me, it's more about the journey. It's more about how I feel throughout the journey. It's more about how I, you know, um, how much fun I'm having throughout the journey. So all of that matters to me. It's not just about you know I want to get there. Um, I don't know. That's how I, that's how I've always been. Um, I don't know why my brain works this way, but. Manchester uh, City, Manchester City, the football club popped into my mind. Um, you know, back back when they got you know bought out by that billionaire tycoon person from the Middle East. All of a sudden, they had all this money available. All right, let's buy all the, all the best players. Let's buy everyone and just get them together and let's let's win some, you know, Champion League finals. You know, and it, they didn't do that. They didn't do that for many many years. Like right, just buying people and putting them in the same room wasn't you know, uh, wasn't the, the, the secret sauce, it wasn't the secret recipe um, to success. Um, whereas somebody kind of like, I don't know, somebody like, I don't know, Arsenal or Manchester United who, you know, during the um, Alex Ferguson's era, like they, they, a lot of those guys go brought up through the ranks, through the youth academy. They learn the system, they learn how to play, um, you know, and by the time they got to the so the first team, they knew exactly what, what the expectation was and what the style of play that they wanted. Um, so to me, m like that's much more appealing to me than just splashing a bunch of money and just get, getting all this super, du super duper guys, putting them in the same room, be like, oh, let's go play. Like, you know, obviously that's a quicker route to, to success. You know, that's kind of the Westside Barbell thing where you, you, know, you cut depth um, and you put more weight on the bar and it's kind of like a lot easier to do this um, then you know get that same weight on the bar and go ask the grass whereas Manchester United is kind of like it's a much longer process it's a lot more tedious there's a boring thing called flexibility and mobility you have to worry about um, there's just more involved in squatting ask the grass a lot of people can't even squat ask the grass like and they're not interested in getting there for me um, I basically get turned on by doing all the other fluffy shit um, so I can come in here and squat ask the grass um, because the result is, is much more fruitful, it's much more beautiful to watch somebody squat ass to grass, um, and it's the way we're supposed to move, you know. Um, this is why I also like raw lifting. Um, you know, I don't mind a belt, I don't mind, you know, knee sleeves or whatever you guys call them, um, you know, keep your knees warm, but when, when we start getting into wraps, when we start getting into like, you know, single ply, multi ply lifting, man, that is just, it's just, in my eyes, that completely ruins everything, man. When I see a multiplier lifter and a single plier lifter, it is impressive. But I can't wait for them to take all that shit off so I can see them lift raw. Because I, I have nothing to compare that to on a daily life. Because like, I don't know how much the suit is giving that person. And I don't know how much that rap is giving that person. You know, so, you know, the whole thing about watching sports... You know, where it be soccer, where it be football, where it be basketball, is that you can relate to it. So when you see LeBron James, you know, dunk over somebody, dunk, dunk over Tim Duncan, right? You know, that Statue of Liberty dunk, you know, slam dunk that ball over a seven footer. That gives me a relatable experience because I have been to a basketball court and I've stood underneath it and I've looked at the basketball ring and I'm going, shit, that's, a, that's really, really high. <coughs> but I can relate to it. Um, so I, I find it amazing when I saw that. I was like, wow, he dunked over seven footer. That's incredible. Like that's how high he jumped to be able to do that. When I see a multiplier lifter, a single plier lifter in a wrapped lifter, I don't know what, what's going on. Like I'm seeing all the weight on the bar and I'm like, that's sure as hell impressive. But like, I don't really know how impressive it is. Like, cause, cause I don't know how much I would be able to do if I put those 50 layers of whatever material that is. Um, so I guess what I'm saying to you is, is 
the essence of what we're doing matters as well. It's not just the end result. It's not just like, you know, math on the other side of the math equation. Like I'm, I'm interested in, in, the, in the left side of the equation, like what's going on to give you that result. Um, that's how I approach this thing. That's how I've always been um, more of about uh, the journey than, than the destination. Um, and I see a lot of guys on the net, like, and look, uh, once again, like, I, I don't blame anybody because everyone's got their own thing, but guys are just too hungry for results. Um, they're just chasing, gunning, 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 chasing, gunning, gunning. Um, I don't know. Uh, last night I watched the Joe Rogan podcast um, on, on YouTube uh, with Ronnie Coleman. I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you pre pretty much know who Ronnie Coleman is. But basically, Ronnie Coleman is somebody that... Is basically arguably the greatest bodybuilder of all time, but somebody was also like the strongest bodybuilder of all time. Like he, the guy was a powerlifter in his high school days, um, continued powerlifting until the age of about 24, and then he started transitioning to bodybuilding. The guy was a genetic freak from the get go. He says he didn't touch steroids until he was 30, and you know, naturally he could uh, squat seven, eight hundred pounds naturally. Um, that's what he said. So I'm guessing he could deadlift around the same thing and. He said he could uh, pump out 400 pounds on the bench press, you know, up to 10, 12 reps. Um, that's, a, that's a strong, strong, strong dude. Um, that's, a, that's a really, really strong dude. But the one story that kind of, um, that kind of uh, resonated with me was he said that after he won the first Olympia, um, he said he took three months off like he usually did after, after the competition. Um, and then he came back in, and for some reason that year he didn't restart his training back to square one. He kind of jumped a lot of the training and tried to squat 600 pounds for multiple reps. And on the eighth rep, he went bang. He blew a disc, and from then on, it was basically a, a slippery slope downwards. Um, he never got surgery. He just kind of got caro and, and kind of was, you know, took the conservative management, I guess, and, and tried to work around it. Um, he continued on, you know, obviously lifting and, and, and working around it. Um, but, you know, he didn't address the issue. He kept going and going and going and then it got worse and worse. And now basically the guy's had 13 back surgeries. He's had the entire spine fused. He's had bilateral hip replacements and, and whatnot. Um, so I guess the reason why I'm telling you this story is because it's very, very important to, you know, start from scratch. Um, not get too hungry, not get too egoistic, uh, egotistical, whatever the term is. Um, just trust the process and enjoy the process. Don't be one of those guys that's just goal oriented. All I want to do is have one million followers on YouTube. All I want to do is have a 400 kilo squat. That's all I want to do. And until then, I'm, 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 I'm unhappy. That is a wrong approach. That, that's not what you should do. You should just enjoy every process. Enjoy being a scrubber, squatting 140 kilos on the front squat. Enjoy struggling for months on end to hit 200 kilos squat. Um, I enjoy the, the plight, I enjoy the journey. Um, and I encourage you guys to have that paradigm shift in your mind and, 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 and think of life that way because all too often I've seen people make it to the top and they've gone, oh, this is it. This is all there is to it. Um, and then they feel bad about not enjoying the journey because when you get to the top, oftentimes it's actually quite lonely. Um, so, uh, so they've said. And how many, how many, how many guys have you seen make it to the top and be unhappy and freaking even commit suicide and all sorts of things? So, don't just focus yourself on the results. Focus on the journey. Focus on health. Focus on, on going through the journey a proper way. And don't just you know be all too hasty getting to the top.